What is good? We're back. We got Big Co in the house. Let's go. Pretty excited, Big Co. You ready to go? Yeah, man. Happy to be here. It's been too long. It's good to get back in. Strap in. Pull the microphone up. Mm-hmm. Put the headphones on. You know. Got the Chiefs Eagles on. Chiefs Eagles in the background. How does it get better than that? It doesn't. I mean. Nobody. Like, no Dan, like Dan Patrick said. That's right. Nobody. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Ready to roll. <laughs> <laughs> we're ready to go. We today are we we're gonna hit uh, a little a little, little more rebuild discussion. We, you know, we're gonna go the right way to rebuild. The only way. This is it. This is what we're doing. If you're listening, just kidding. You can do whatever you want, but it's just a, a title that you know seems like it'll do our elite tips and tricks for the right way to rebuild. Hey, now, now we've got it all. I That's, mean, all the keywords have been included. We all those keywords. We can break it down from here. All right. So instead of doing roster breakdowns, which you know we've been doing some, we appreciate all the input. Uh, you can go subscribe, like, comment below. You can hit us up on the Discord, five dollar holler. That's where we're getting a lot of our breakdowns. But we've also done some from YouTube. Uh, if you're on YouTube, we want to continue doing those. Send us your trades. Send us your roster reviews. Hit us with a hashtag. Uh, Dynasty Trades um, in your YouTube comment that, or hit us up on uh, the Twitters at the F- FF Dynasty or on the uh, Instagrams at the FF Dynasty and send us send us those trades and, and maybe we'll uh, we'll pull them in for, for trades. But we're trying to get those, you know, coming in and, and, and doing those, you know, once a week, once every other week or so. So like it. Let's get it rolling. But today, like I said, no roster reviews. We're just going to uh, talk about you know, the ideas, the hows and whys, the, the, the key points of, of rebuilding. Uh, well, yeah. So what's your general philosophies here? You don't, don't click off the video. If uh, Casey's no roster reviews makes you think I need to hear about specific people there. I got some, uh, in, you know, some examples here that do, that do have players involved, but I thought it would be nice to talk about the high level and work our way down. What's your goal, mm-hmm. you know, committing to it. And just kind of understanding what it means to rebuild. There's simple little things, general trade etiquette to help you along too. Sure, um, and as, and it's a, a mindset of right. what you're trying to do. What not only is like, all right, I'm gonna rebuild. What does that mean? How am I gonna get there? Like, I mean, obviously, I think we. If you're in Dynasty, if you're listening to this podcast, it's my favorite line to set something up. If you're listening to this, you, I think you know what it means to rebuild, and I think you know what the goal would be. How do you get there? And I think I think there's not enough people really explaining it, right? And it's hard to explain. Well, you know, it's pretty. It's the 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 way to say is you know you you, you sell high and and you know buy low. What's the best of thing? Of course, that's, of course. It's the old like Chinese proverb, right? <laughs> right. Buy low, sell high. So most it's a, my favorite part. Right. Sometimes you sell low, and mm-hmm. sometimes you buy high. Right. You know. Um, you know, real quick I, with the trade etiquette stuff, it was just basically you know, there's no reason to be. I know it's in text, so I like to try to keep the text as light as possible. Put throw some ha ha's in there, and just don't don't let somebody think that you're like berating them when you. you know, sometimes things can get lost in translation. So oh, just that okay. little like trade etiquettes when you're typing stuff to people and and whatnot that you prop that you don't know, or even if you do know and you don't have like the phone number to text them, but they're in like kind sure. of the sub friend group. Sure, you know the ha ha's, the laugh out louds, the little self deprecating a little bit of just. Yeah keeping it light and not that I'm ever really you know, trying to belittle you, talk down to you and like uh, never, never send the stupid rebuttal trade of, of, yeah. you know, like, Oh, they sent you a bad trade. So now I'm going to send you a word. Like just don't do any, there's no need for it. Yeah, you just, I, you gotta like keep that. it. You gotta kill them with kindness. You gotta keep it open. And like, you can go call your boy and tell somebody how dumb they are or, or no you know, scream into a pillow or something, but it's not going to help you in the long run to be acting that way. I love that. And that's uh, something that we've said, many times in the past years it's been mm-hmm. you know but the kill them with kindness thing is something that we really started hitting on a few years ago when we were really deep in our trade trade talk pods back in the day you and i mm-hmm. and it's completely true um you, you know just that card spawned us back and spe- if, I, if me and you were trying to make a trade i don't need no lols i don't need to have right. high, I don't, not with you, you. Know? no yeah. i mean because I, we, I can go right to the point we, we, can, we can, ah, can fuck you man no I'm yeah not yeah because uh, i mean you son of a bitch, you know that's not... <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, I mean, but we've been boys for 20 years, you know? So, like, 
But if I'm trying to make a trade with some, yes, if I'm trying to make a straight, especially a, a basically a stranger trade, mm-hmm. you got to LOL, ha ha it, or type something out. If you know, if you're sending emails or if you're in a quick chat, like you said, yes, the text messages don't get just don't respond to the bad trade offer. The just like yes, everything you just said, completely agree with all that. Um, and right, well, yeah, keep it light. All here, right. I just wanted a little little trade etiquette like off the rip, and and you know a couple of those other things would would be on my list of things. But you know, take us take us through. We got uh, 20, 20, 30 minutes of your, uh, you know, the world is your oyster here. Let's do it. I don't even like oysters. <laughs> um, so my first thing of understanding what it They're means delicious. to rebuild, your team's gonna be bad. Okay, like, like the, the idea, the point is the, the only draft pick that you have control of is yours. Mm-hmm. So, now you don't have, if, if, you don't, if you don't bottom out, you're not the worst team, that's fine because maybe you're, you know, rebuilding with a couple of young studs. You're rebuilding around Justin Jefferson and Patrick Mahomes. So, you, maybe you never get down to be the 1-1. One, one. That's fine. But you're rebuilding, so that is kind of the idea. You, you, not that you want to drive your team so far down in the dirt that you never come back from it, but if you can say, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to stack up these, these draft picks or, um, you know, in a, in addition to that, yeah, I do have a Patrick Mahomes here and I do have a Justin Jefferson, but you know, I'm gutting my roster around those guys and you're making trades and you're doing this and you stacking up on some young guys and stacking up on some draft picks. The idea is to be bad for a while with right. a, with a goal to be good and is good, you know, to be really good. And the sooner the better, but understand that it's most likely a process. You can, you can have said, I mean, for one of those teams like, all right, well I won the championship two years ago and my kind of getting a little bit old, but I still got some really good mid range players. You can, you can rebuild a little bit or you can go all in. If you're like, all right, my team sucks. Yeah. You know, respecting your draft pick is the first matter of business. And it's like, all right, well, if you know that you're trying to tank, you know, you're I'm, I'm I'm trading away all of my respectable veterans and getting what I can get for them and you know, hey, I'm going to gut my running back room so I can drop down. I'm going to build around some receivers or tight ends or quarterbacks if it's super, super flex or if it's tight end premier and what have you. You got to respect your first rounder obviously, but you got to respect your second rounders as well. And I and I was guilty of this for years. I was yeah. using my second round picks and all these trades that I might not have had to. It's trade. It's hard to get a trade done. And I spent years just being like, hey, if it takes my second round pick to make that deal done, I get it done. And then all of a sudden, my team didn't make the playoffs that year. The following year, I've given my second round pick. I gave away the two, 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 three, two, four. It's like I didn't mean to do that. I wanted to be good. I hoped I was going to be good. Sometimes you're not in. But if you're planning on being bad. You have got to respect your second rounder. Shoot, respect your third too. But you know, by the time you get in the third round, three one is great and all. But I'm talking about, yeah. You know, last week when I, we were prepping for this podcast, we knew it was coming up. I saw an Eckler trade get done, mm-hmm. and so a bad team, rebuilding team, trades away an, uh, an Austin Eckler. Obvi, you got to do what you got to do. This now's the perfect time to do that. Um, so especially two weeks ago, the bad team trades away Eckler gets a first round pick back from a good team, but also trades away in that pick. They give away Eckler and their second round pick, get back a first round pick from the bad team and some other throw in stuff, Sure, you know, but the, but when I saw it, when you give away a good team, you give away an Eckler type who is, you know, a top five running back PPR comes in, you give away an Eckler to a good team. What'd you just do? Made him better. Anything can happen in the playoffs, but if you're, especially if you're dealing with a top, a buyer of an Eckler type, mm-hmm. it's going to be a good team almost every single time. Of course, try your best to sell him to a bad team and get a better first round pick for him. Sure. But you can't give away your second round pick in that deal because what you just did, especially if you're giving away an Eckler and you're trying to rebuild and your team's going downhill anyway, especially if you suck again, because I can't go, we can't, all these and that, you got to, we're, this is a my team sucks rebuild scenario. Right. Not I used to. I won a championship last year, and right. I, I'm kind of good, but I'm kind of not. I got lucky to win it. This is a, I'm this gonna is be a real, a real rebuild. A, a real scenario. rebuild. So you got an early second round pick coming. So I just gave my Eckler to Casey, and Casey's team is really good. And now he might have anything can happen in the playoffs. It's not necessarily the 112, but let's just say he made the playoffs. 110. 110. 111. And my team sucks, so I got the two one two 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 three two. You know, you see what I'm saying? See what I'm building there, guys? Yeah. You gave away an Eckler for a four or five pick pick swap, 
which, you know, if you're in a this year's Superflex League and you're at 1-6 and you give away an Eckler to go to 1-1 one, one and get Caleb Williams, maybe that's worth it. But not from 1-10 to 2-3. Right. Five picks in the draft is the very – The back end, right. in a lot of cases, from 2-10 to 2-2 to two, two becomes sort of personal preference interchangeable. Well, um, what I'm saying, yeah, um, and and year, every year is different on what what draft picks are valued at by the time the rookies drafts gets here and stuff. But just seeing those notes, just seeing those draft picks on paper right now, yeah, you gave away an Eckler and an early second for a late oh, first sure, and yeah. some small pieces, right. you know. So like you basically you undersold Eckler. Now is it nice? Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Like if I'm if I had the two two and I I just moved up to the two one or the one eleven with Eckler, like I feel like we're at a point in the draft where a lot of the times, I, what did I just even oh, do? Yeah, what, yeah, what did yeah. I just even do? Say, you might get that same guy at two two. This right, that's, that's be taking what I'm it. Saying. Like, oh, personal preference range. I got you. Right. I missed what you were trying to yeah, say. Yeah, there. maybe I would start including three and fours in in picks if it's like helping me get something done sure. for a higher level thing. Yeah, but like I'm, I just if I'm rebuilding, like I, I'm not. I'm just gonna tell you straight up, like I'm probably not giving you the picks because like. That's, that's the whole I'm point. Doing. That's yeah, what I'm that's doing. the whole point. There's yeah. no reason for you to be trading you know? away draft picks. Right. You're bringing them in. Right. And especially when you're rebuilding it, Matt, all those that you want to get it really anytime you're making a trade, you'd love to get an extra 3 or 4 tr- tossed in your sure. way sure. to use later. And why not? Yeah. The more the merrier, right? But especially if you're doing the rebuilding, then the the draft picks are your equity. Like that is that's your um that's that's your commodity moving forward to move in and out of stuff if you and yeah you know you might get on the clock and you got your 310 it's like well i don't want that 310 play i don't want anybody right here sometimes that happens but obviously this year's a bad time to talk about that with all the tank dales and the pukas and all that this is a bad year to talk about how third round draft picks aren't worth anything um and you know josh downs and all those boys i don't uh, we've gone into that plenty uh, you know but a, just uh, but i'm yeah, just saying silly so philosophy here, just, well you know and there's plenty of years where your third there's plenty of years where your first round pick never That's does what anything. Exactly. So two or three or four third round picks, bring them on, stack them up. You know, you're not give you you right. you'll move them later. You can use them or not. You can but you could probably help you get out of a tier at some point that you don't get up from a tier that you don't really like to a tier that you do, you know, you can sure. get out of the you, you might, be, might be able that you, those couple of picks could move you up, you know, four or five picks that that to get you out of the the, the tier that you don't like into it into you know, the back end of a tier that you really do like. You might be sitting there at two four and being like, I have got to have this player, but he's the guy on the clock at two three is taking his time. You're like, I did, if I don't draft this guy, I'm not, I'm, I'm not having fun. I will. I need this. I need this two, three. And then you give him three, two to make the deal. You know, you might have to give him two threes to move up one spot. I I wouldn't from time. Every situation is different. I'm not saying I'm not recommending that, but sometimes you're like, I know this dude, it's there's a huge tear break. There's one player left, mm-hmm. and there's no chance this guy's not going to take this player. Mm-hmm. And I need to switch spots with him, or I'm going to pull my hair out. Right. You know, a couple extra third round picks helps those situations. Sure. Helps grease those wheels often. Um, so the next thing is that you know it comes with that is this you know playing the market. We're talking about playing the market right now. Sometimes you need to rush it, and sometimes you, most of the times you don't rush it, especially when you're rebuilding. Don't. The biggest thing is if you took over an orphan. That's listen up. If you took over an orphan, this is right when people really screw up. But also the guys that, you know, decide we got a guy in one of our home leagues decided he he had decided he was gonna rebuild and sends today. out you know, I'm for today. I'm <laughs> rebuilding today. So I'm sending a you know, he sent us uh sent me Josh Allen for a pick. I one of my picks I had was one I had the one one and the one two in what in our home league last year, and he sent me Josh Allen for the one two. And then I was like, of course I'm not doing that. It's a one quarterback league, Superflex. That would have been all over sure. it. But one quarterback league, I didn't, I didn't want Josh Allen for the one two. And 20 minutes later, I get the email or you know the the notification on Sleeper the trades made and and our Jay Wayne picked up Josh Allen for the one nine. It's like he obviously he sent those trades out. He he was like, I'm getting a first for Josh Allen, mm-hmm. and he sent them to everybody. You know, I had multiple picks in the first round. I had the one, one, the one, two. I might have had the five and the seven or something like that, or yeah. six and the eight. I, I had multiples. You know, mm-hmm. we could have talked later on. I wasn't talking to you about my two, but right. I could have. You probably would have ended up better than the one nine if you'd have given me a minute to talk to you about it. It happened. It was fast. It was over with. Done. He got the one nine. He's happy apparently, and Jay Wayne's super happy. You know, um, 
Yeah, I don't remember who he turned that into, but but it was fast, right? You know, too um, fast, too fast, and and even more egregious. Uh, in one of the FF Dynasty leagues that we have, uh, this fella jumped into the league, and he's good because I've been in another league with him. He's really, he's I know he's a good player, and he jumped in the same day. Boom, he sold Brees Hall. He sold Brees Hall in twenty minutes of being in the league. Yeah, you can't do that. I even texted him, and I didn't blast him. But I was like, dude, you can't do that. Yeah. I was like, you could have at least give you just gave Brees Hall away to like the second best team in the league. And I would have given you way more than I you I you I I didn't even get an offer. I didn't get a chance to an offer. I didn't, you know, yeah. it was like he was in the league and bo- it was like, boom, hey guys, I'm here. I'm gonna make some noise. This is gonna be fun. I'm rebuilding. Everybody knew it was rebuilding. Yeah. Took over the worst team. Thanks for coming in and, and playing. Right. Brees Hall gone in twenty minutes. I was working. It's the middle of the day. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. I got Dude, I didn't do. even know you were in the league yet. Desk, yeah. I didn't even know. I, the first time I knew you were in the league was when I figured out you had already traded Brees Hall and, he, and you sold him way too low. Right. And I had, and then I spent 10 minutes on the, you know, text messaging with him, you know, being like, hey, man, this, you know, next time, boom, 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 boom. It just happened too fast. So you, you, so that's a guy like a Brees Hall. Anybody in that really top spoke. And if you want to know what, all right, what does that top tier mean? And just a just a quick blanket statement. If you're taking over a team or you have a team that you decide, hey, I'm rebuilding, picture what a startup might look like. Just say the first 24 picks, the first two rounds. Mm-hmm. Anybody that would fall in the first two rounds, maybe even three, just to be safe. Don't trade those guys away in a hurry. Mm-hmm. That's just a quick, broad stroke. Right. Just these guys, these first 24, 36 guys, those guys you shouldn't be hurrying about. Now, if you're trading somebody that should be going in the third round and somebody's giving you somebody that's going to go in the second round, then I, yeah, sure, sure. pull the trigger unless it's, right. you know, the guy that's supposed to be going in the second round is actually 30 years old and he's on his way out and he's tumbling down the line, you know? So you got to kind of use your head what, how that works, but just don't rush it if you got studs. Yeah. Now, if your studs 30 years old, I gave this analogy out last time, you know, or this example out last time we talked, maybe last time I was here is the Travis mm-hmm. Kelsey thing. Mm-hmm. You know, a complete rebuild has Travis Kelsey on his team. He's the best tight end maybe ever. You can really argue him and Gronk and sure. uh, maybe a hand of other, other, you know, two or three. You ain't getting far before you have to call Kelsey's name right. as far as production. And it's like, well, he's 34. You don't need any more seasons or any more games out of Kelsey to establish value. Right. There's nothing that we need to be said or talked about. You just need to trade Travis Kelsey before he plays a game in the NFL <laughs> just in case he gets hurt. Right. You know, because what if he gets you, – you just he's 34. He's right. never going to be more valuable. For some reason, somehow he's been this valuable for this long, right. and that's fantastic, but don't right. take your chance. And this – you know, when this, when this situation came up, this was a guy in the league. He joined our league. And he was a terrible team. Hey, man, thanks for coming. Thanks for joining. Looking forward to dealing with you. Just, hey, here's just a little piece of advice. Because I sent him an offer for Travis Kelsey right away. Mm -hmm. And I was like, here's a good offer. And it had Goddard in it. I was giving him Goddard and some other stuff. Replacing his tight end with a really good tight end. Yeah. And what I can't you can't replace Kelsey, but I gave sure. you Goddard. I just like I didn't leave you barren. Right. Goddard, a late first, something, something, whatever my offer was. And maybe I didn't even give him that first, but I could have gotten there. Right. Could have given you way more that but just if you don't sell Kelsey to me, sell him to somebody before the season because I want to see you improve. Yeah. A year of the bottom team in the league. The only thing you got is Kelsey. <laughs> Don't take a chance on him tearing his knee out, right. you know? And so you got to know when to rush it, but you all got to know when to not rush it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't, um, I, I don't understand the people who are like, I, I came up with my offer. This is the offer. This is the best offer. And this is the only offer that I'm doing. I sent you the, the first offer I sent you is the best offer. And that's, that's, that's what I'm doing. I don't, I guess I don't like, I, there's so much more of a dance that goes on with this. Like, I don't really understand the philosophy of saying, let me just give you my first and best offer right off the rip. Like for, for certain times and certain places, sure. Like that, that is, but for the most part, like why in the world would like, I don't know what your values are. That's the whole point of this, this right. dance that we're doing. I got to figure out where your values are because now that's the way I'm, I'm going to get the best deal out of this. And you could say what you want, but like, that's the whole point of trading. Sure. Like, and I have seen, I have seen some things that I, I've, I've seen guys that are just say, Hey, I like these three wide receivers on your team. 
rank them in order for me that you who, who you like the best or who would be hardest to get if you rank them for me that way i know what i'm dealing with i've seen stuff like that's that that's fine. pretty cool i've seen that stuff work out well for me i give pretty decent solid yeah I get pretty good offers right off the rip. I'm going to give you a, a ballpark offer, but I, there's, you know. you I give stronger offers off the rip than you do because you, and that that's fine. But I'm I, a pretty strong offer off the nah, rip. No, you're not nearly as strong as I am off the rip. All right. But, all right, all right. but. I've I've just decided that I have too many leagues. I'm a, you like I'm to just a, throw a bunch of junk in there. And I'm make highly it seem like addicted. <laughs> no, I have a good offer, but I will throw some extra stuff. I'll throw my throw. I'll oh, give yeah. you my throw in. Oh, right and it, it works, and it's drives. It's maddening that people get caught up in the fucking junk pile over here. And they're like, <laughs> look at all this. Yeah, all right. And I'm like, what are you doing? I was he basically voodooed you into t- these two guys, and then these guys are fucking idiots over here. <laughs> What's up? It's not all junk yeah. pile. I mean, you so, you said you called my. You know what? I traded away one junk pile last year, and you were giving me a hard time about it. Nico Collins was in that junk pile. Don't look oh, so junky well, anymore, I, does I, it? You know, I like Nico. Been been a big Nico guy, but that was. I, I wish we could figure out what that trade was because it was it was anyway. I don't want to get too far off. Just saying off off side. Yeah. Well, I mean, so uh, you did get me out of my. I don't I have no idea what I was saying now, but so I'm um, go to my next thing. Don't miss the run up. Just what do you mean? One time, I w- we were in the uh, Caribbean, and uh, what well, I think the wife and I went to the Bahamas. We went to Long Island, Bahamas, and I did. We didn't do our research. It was right after a hurricane. The place was devastated. It was awesome though. We were really out in the middle of nowhere, and there was nobody around. We had a great time for like four days, and we we're like, okay, you want to see some people? I, we had our four days on the beach by ourselves and just blue water and nobody. It was mm. awesome. And then we, we had this little rented car and we beat that thing to heck all up and down the streets and <laughs> took it out on the beach. We had a great time. But then we were like, all right, well, let's go to Atlantis and get go to the casino and have a good time. So mm-hmm. anyway, but doing that, since we were flying from that island to the other to Atlantis, we were on this little tiny, tiny airplane. And the big ones do it, too. You just don't feel it as much. But they really gas it right before they take off. This called the run up that makes sure that the engines are going to take off. Yeah. <laughs> Don't miss the run up for your trading, but this, we backed up to the very edge of the of the back, the rear edge of the air, runway. the runway, yeah. and this little tiny four seater plane. It was the craziest thing. I don't fly well. I don't fly much, and I don't <laughs> fly well. This dude, it holds the brakes on this little tiny airplane. It's brake standing, and he he's <laughs> just holding the brakes, and he's. <laughs> And he lets off the brakes, and we go down the runway. And it was awesome. <laughs> and so, and the, but the water's right up there, and I know what he just did. So I know he needs all he's got, and he takes it all the way <laughs> to the very edge of the concrete, and he pulls up, and it was freaking awesome. It was crazy. I thought I was gonna die, but I was like, he has to do this all the time. He has to do this all the time. I'm trusting this dude. So anyway, said, nope. I've been on this island with nobody else too. I'm yeah. lit up For right sure. now. Been on a bender. We're nobody. about to We're see what this plane's got. <laughs> got to give it all it's got. The big and the big planes are the real airports. Oh, yeah, you can hear it. They, they you hear them give a little run up, but they don't hold the brakes and you know try to make make sure they got enough lift to not go in the water. That that very short runway over there. Um, but don't miss the run up. And here's my example: Darren Waller, mm-hmm. absolute. Fantastic fantasy point score and tight end for the last couple years, last handful of years, but the last two years been nicked up and injured and hurting your team. Three years ago, carried everybody to a championship that had him. Well, this year there was a huge run up. It's traded to the Giants. They got nobody that can make plays on their team. Mm-hmm. And then they hit that preseason week one, and Darren Waller catched like six balls in the first seven snaps. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's Waller and it's Waller all day. There's a huge Darren Waller run up right there. You got to trade him and you got to trade him right then. And I didn't. And it hurt and it hurt and it hurt so bad. I even got you gotta him at in, least trade half. of. If you got a lot of them, you got to at least trade half. Now, them. I have some championship and, contenders. And, and roster I had contingent, some, but I, agree. I had some Go. championship contending rosters that I was like, dude, I need these Darren Waller points and I don't want to get rid of them. But also had a couple teams where I like, I can't wait for him to be crushing and sell him so I can get a nice return. Right. I've learned that lesson where, like, he's already old enough mm-hmm. and injured prone mm-hmm. enough to where I don't want to. It was basically and the, in an unknown situation right, enough. Right. Well, I mean, I felt like the situation was going to be there. He right. showed me no, what the no, situation was going to be. So the situation be could be good, but it's unknown. Like, it's not like he didn't go to with he 
Kelsey didn't leave and he didn't go to Patrick Mahomes where sure. you're like, oh my God, the situation, you know, sure. you, you had Daniel Jones who you think is going to be well, good and they this, can throw again, to him a ton. But a anyway. Well, that's, that's a good point. Before the season started, we all thought what we knew. I, I Last time I was here, the last thing I think I said was in day ball we trust and now we don't trust him so much. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and so Daniel Jones goes out and blows his knee out and uh, yada, yada, yada. The Giants are just a mess. But the the run up of Darren Waller was missed. Mm -hmm. I missed that opportunity. Yeah. So, uh, you know, like I said, you don't rush some of your trades. You don't rush to get rid of Brees Hall mm -hmm. or those top three round guys, those young stud blue chip cornerstone uh, foundational pieces. You don't rush to trade those guys. No. And you don't give away Darren Waller for peanuts either. But on that run up right there, he was hot as fire. Yeah, I had there was one one league I'm in. I was in really good trade talks of he was in part of a package to upgrade a super flexed quarterback, and Waller was a cornerstone in that package to leap a nice leapfrog of quarterback value. And it just we were working on some intricacies of the deal, mm -hmm. and then the deal fell through because Darren Waller got hurt, and it's just like. That's that's a huge bummer for me. Yeah, I think that's a good point. The community as a whole and maybe some players who don't play for a lot of money or haven't played for that long or just for whatever reason or the value, you know, got to be the feel like they're getting the all time high value all the time. Like, I feel like there's a lot of like sell this guy high because he's the highest he'll ever go. Like, I, I'm not selling Garrett Wilson. Like, I just, you know, like there, there's there's those higher upper echelon guys like, yeah, they went that high. There's no, they can't go that much higher. I get it. But they're that good. Like, I'm not selling St. Brown because he, why? Because he's he's as high as he can go. Yeah. No. But Darren, like guys like Darren Waller at this point in time was going above where he should be going. He is like you said, he, he's running. That's a That's when you got to hammer the sell high it was running the hot. value was was probably inflated a little bit it wasn't going to get any higher there's a there's a whole bunch of reasons why and you probably should have moved them in majority of your league so i think that's a perfect that's a, that's a really good statement there because I, I there's way too much sell this young stud who just emerged and is crushing because you know unless you can get justin jefferson don't right you know right Th anyway all right so the old Chinese proverb, buy low, sell high. Everybody loves to make fun of that thing, but it's it's so true and funny. But again, sometimes you buy high, which is, you know, buying Amara St. Brown before last, you know, it, the coming off the year before where he had had a seven-week stretch at the end of the year, he was awesome, but he was, quote, unquote, the only target. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, he had immediately outperformed his mid-second round rookie draft capital, and you probably would have had to take a late first to get him. But how many first round picks does it take to get him now? Right. If, if, if you were selling, like you said, if you sold St. Brown high after his rookie year when he broke out, you blew it. Right. If you bought him high right then, you hit a home run because he's tripled in value since that spot because he came out the next year and got 10 passes week one in the second year. And it's like, okay, well, it wasn't because they didn't have any targets. He's just awesome. Right. And you got to pick your spots to buy high. You got to pick your spots to sell low. Sometimes you're selling low because you're like, all right, well, I, you know, hey, I, this Sometimes guy. Sometimes you're going to miss on either one, and it's fine. But you know. Oh, I, I've, I've made plenty of <laughs> trades that I miss on. I, to me, trading is half the fun of Dynasty. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to miss out on that. I, I send plenty. I, I have plenty of bad trades, and that's fine. That's, I, you live and die by the trade. Right. That's fine. So a good buy low, sell high type situation like this year, this rookie season, the very first rookie that we te we had a – maybe I missed the first um, mock that y'all did and I reviewed it, um, or maybe we just did it and then just halfway through we were 10th or 12th round or something, or maybe it was a rookie draft. And I, it was a rookie mock and it was in the second round – and I said, A chain at two four or something uh -huh. like that. I was like, second round at the very first rookie me and you talked about this year. I was like, because I'd seen A chain play, and I was like, A chain in the second round of the rookie draft, all day every day. Mm -hmm. So you get around to late rookie drafts this year, and he has been he was nicked up in the preseason. So late rookie drafts this year, we got some home leagues that are late. So in the early rookie drafts, he was hot and heavy. And then he got hurt in the preseason. And it's like, all right, well, he got slammed down one time and he was hurt. Now everybody's talking about how thin he is and this and that. And he slid a little bit in those rookie drafts. That would have been a, re a really, really good time to catch a, a nice little dip. Another one, 
uh, Jameer Gibbs for two weeks with, with Montgomery out there crushing. Well, all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, they don't know how to use their new toy. They should have just, if they were going to do that, they should have got a guy in the second round. Why mm-hmm. they, why they draft Gibbs early if they're not going to play him. And, but it's just, you know, Hey, he's, they're revving him up. They're he's, revving him up. He's a rookie. They got a good player. They got, and they got it in their old school coach. It's like, all right, right, well, let's get him. Let's work him in. And they're a good team. Right. And, and they have, they have options. So those are short windows to talk about. The buy low, sell high is always a good time. Justin Fields last year. Mm-hmm. It was a different team. It wasn't a rebuild team, but the buy low, sell high window example still perfectly works. Last year, first five or six weeks of the season, Justin Fields is looking like terrible. And I gave what what was guaranteed to be a late first for Justin Fields. Now, prior to that season starting, he was very, very expensive, and that was a good deal for me at the time to take a chance on a guy who I believed in his rushing ability as a quarterback. And then literally within a week of me making that trade for him, he goes and – explodes for like three or four 40 yard you know three right. three or four 40 point games i knew that i felt like that justin fields was in a slump and that he could come out of it and play better and his value could go up i didn't want to trade my first round pick i wanted that's a fun trade that's a yeah. fun pick to have and i want to trade it but i was like i can get this quarterback right here when he's in a slump and he went out and you know, doubled that value within a couple of weeks started slow again this year and got hurt so there's another chance to buy him in other leagues you know <laughs> things to look at is if you're rebuilding you the, the buy low sell high is is you got to play the market right you know i mentioned commitment mm-hmm. you know is if you're going to be committed to it so basically if you're really going to be committed to it it's going to be a lot of work it can be it doesn't have to be a ton of work but it, it's going to be a decent amount of work and you know if you're 20 year old 20 year old in college and you got a lot more time than a, sure. you know 40 year old family man but how much time are you going to put into it? How much time you got, buddy? Accept that challenge or, you know, maybe just do yourself in the league a favor and quit. Right. You know, retire from the league. Right. And say, or, or maybe you've turned into the 40 year old family man and you're like, hey, guys, I'm, I got too many leagues. Whether you're a mid, you know, if you're like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm a tear it down rebuild or I'm a halfway rebuild or I'm, I don't have time for it. Either decide what you are, commit to it and try to do, be, do awesome and have fun with it. Or maybe you just retire and do yourself in your league because right. don't be the guy that doesn't do anything right? and sits there mute all day and all the time and not responding to any trades and just letting your team just run to shit and got Cooper Cup on your team. You suck and you don't even trade him and you're, you know, he's dying on your roster. You know, if you don't know what it means to rebuild and you don't want to rebuild, but why are you playing in the dynasty league if you're going to sit here and you got Cooper Cup and, you know, Jonathan Taylor is your only two good players. Right. You know, you're going to let a wide receiver age out and then a really good young running back turn not good, turn not young anymore. Right. You're this letting, val- you value, know, right. you're losing value, you know. So this is like, you know, understand the commitment of what it means to rebuild. I think some of the things we, some of the things I just wanted to talk through was some, you know, some theory on it mm-hmm. and some mindset on it. And then like, hey, you know, the respecting your draft picks thing, you understand what your team's going through. The play in the market, don't miss the run up, that type of stuff. It's just, is that going to rebuild your team for you tomorrow? No, but it's. I think it gives you some some really, you know, things to keep in mind for you know. It's some factors. It's right. a, it's a every. There's a lot of things that go into it, but those are some factors to help. Do it the right way and elite tips and tricks. It, those you know? were elite <laughs> tips and tricks, <laughs> right? I mean, those were you so know? elite. We do plenty of giving you exact examples of of things, you know, and then doing roster construction and all that stuff and. But, you know, sometimes it's good to take the take the bigger view of things and kind of, you know, talk about the hows and the whys of things. And uh, I think there was there was a lot of good stuff in there. You got anything else before we, we get out of here? Not on this one. We'll come back ready to fire next time. All right. Well, we appreciate you. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, five-star review, high dollar holler on the Discord. Uh, t-shirts over at RevelryBrewingCompany.com. A lot of, lot of ways to support the team. Um, Always, always, always appreciate you guys, uh, and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Peace.